Hi everybody, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a concrete slab for a circular hot tub. Pouring some crete here today for a hot tub. You can see we got the conveyor truck down into a chute all the way down into that hot tub there. Down in Georgetown, Maine, way down on the ocean. Kind of a rainy day today, but we'll get it done. All right, so as you can see, we had quite a distance to reach this thing. It was kind of a last minute thing because the, it was a rainy day, so we decided to come down here and get this, this slab done for the hot tub. So we couldn't get a pump truck. So we decided to use the conveyor truck and then just hook on a few extra chutes. So we had to go about, the conveyor truck reaches about 45 feet and I got about 25 feet of chute there, so. It's just about 70 feet away from the back of the truck we're going. Now, we're pouring a 4,000 PSI for concrete. And I asked the dispatcher when I ordered it for a high range water reducer. Because I knew we had to pour a little bit looser slump than normal. So we're probably pouring around a 7 inch slump today. Get to get it down all those chutes. But with a, with a high range water reducer, it doesn't really need a lot of water to get that slump. So we don't lose any strength in the concrete and it actually kind of makes it a little bit easier to work with when we finish it so that, that's a bonus also as you can see we got just about the circular part filled up there we're moving the chute back a little bit to get the step part filled up this was two yards of concrete total the circular parts roughly about eight by eight and then uh, the step part was about 5x4 roughly. So Eric's in there, he's magging the edges now. He's going to mag the edges all the way around and you'll, you'll see how he's going to screed that thing. The hot tub, the slab is flat itself. They didn't want any pitch or anything on it. They just wanted it to be flat. So when they go to set the hot tub on it, they don't have to shim the hot tub at all. It'll just sit perfectly. How many of you guys out there do slabs and, and how many of you done a circular slab before? If you, if you have, let me know in the comments. This is part two of a part two series. Part one, I showed you how we formed this thing. And I'll have that pop up up top here on the screen and also at the end of the video. So make sure you keep watching to, to see part one, the forming. Also, keep watching till the end of the video if you want to see just how the hot tub fits on this to make sure we got it right. I'm going to show you uh, the finished product with the hot tub sitting on it at the end of the video. So watch the whole video to see that. If you'd like to be able to do a slab like this yourself, you know, I, I got a course for this down in the description. You guys can check that out. It'll teach you all you need to know about forming a slab and then pouring it and then finishing it so you know it's possible you might be able to do something like this yourself if you're thinking about it or if you're thinking about getting into the concrete business you know like like i am that's a good start to it right there is learning concrete slabs because uh, we do we do dozens and dozens of concrete slabs every year it's just garage slabs house slabs hot tub slabs like this slabs for storage sheds so, I mean, that's a big part of our business is just doing concrete slabs. So Eric's got that just about straight edged. He's basically just going off the top of form. Using about an 8 foot straight edge there. We've got all different size and length straight edges. We use magnesium straight edges. They're 2 inches by 4 inches. And we get those from Marshalltown. I got, you know, Marshalltown gave me a special discount for you guys. If you want any of the tools, down, they'll be down in the description. If you use the discount code EAC, when you click on those or go to Marshalltown's website, they'll give you 10% off on any tool you buy. And then it's free shipping too to your house.
So the guys are getting that magged out. They're gonna, they needed a little bit more creep for the step. And uh, the general contractor we're working for wanted us to bury that conduit too. So we're, we're dumping some creep on top of that conduit to get it buried. And then when we do, we'll just shovel a little bit extra creep into that step so we can finish that off. With a conveyor truck, you know, you, you got to shut him off pretty early. Otherwise, he's got to empty that 45 feet of belt before he shuts the belt off. And then we had those two chutes, a 16-foot chute and a 12-foot chute. So when we shut him off, we thought we had plenty in the chutes to finish that up. And by the time we got them all scraped down, we were just a little bit short. But we knew we had, we had to cover that conduit anyway, so... As soon as Luke gets some down there, he, like there he is right there, he's going to just shovel a little bit in there so I can finish that up. I guess it's part of the building code to cover up an electrical conduit like that so someone doesn't try shoveling or digging there, they're not going to they're not going to dig into the conduit and break the line. We only had to put a couple inches over it. We didn't have to put that much over it. So Eric's finishing that up, getting that little step magged out. The guys are just going to screed that right off top of the form. We try to set, always set top of form to grade if we can. This makes it easier straight edging, makes it easier finishing. I think they just magged everything out too. I don't even think they used that bull float that was sitting there. It's just as easy to mag everything. I'm also going to show you, Steno, you know, keep watching guys. I'm going to show you how we finish this thing too. We're going to put a, we're going to edge it, we're going to mag it, we're going to broom it, and then we're going to re edge it to give it a finished look. Even though most of this thing is going to end up being covered by the hot tub. We still like to make it look nice. So that'll be coming right up. The tent, you know, we put a tent over it because it started raining while we were forming this. We formed it and poured it all in one morning. And we, it was about an hour and a half drive for us. So we didn't want to have to, to delay it or come back another day. So we brought that tent with us just in case. I guess it was a good thing we did. Alright, so Darren's getting rid of that little cross piece there. That was just a temporary cross piece to help hold everything in place when we were pouring the concrete. We'll get that removed. And then... There's a little gap there where the 2x4 was. We'll get that all filled in, get it smoothed out. We put some accelerator in this concrete too. So not only was there a, a high range water reducer, we put some accelerator in it to get the concrete to set up quicker. You know, it was a rainy day, number one. And number two, like I said, it was an hour and a half drive. So we want to be able to to pour this thing and we want to be able to strip the forms all today so we don't have to come back now I'm just double checking the slab in a few areas to make sure everything's perfectly level because if the forms were going to move they would have moved when we were filling it with concrete and if we're going to do anything to if we had to do anything to change the level we want to do it now we don't want to wait till it gets any harder but it, it stayed perfect, so we didn't have to touch it. You see, Darren's got most of that gap filled in. He's going he's gonna to give me a little bit of crete there so I can mag the rest of that in. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, I mean, I... I post a lot of different stuff on there. So, I mean, definitely check me out on there. And also on Facebook, 
I've got a private group called Concrete Ninjas, and we, you know, we talk about some stuff on there that, like pricing and stuff that I don't usually talk about on YouTube. So if you want to be part of that group, just search, you know, Facebook for, search a Facebook group for Concrete Ninjas, and then ask to be a member, and I'll, I'll accept you as a member. Then on there, you got a little bit more access to me to ask me questions and stuff too. There we are. We're going around that thing with the edger now. The circular part, you know, with that with that four inch edger, it was still pretty easy to edge, even though it was circular. With a longer edger, let's say a six inch or eight inch edger, that would have been a lot harder to edge around there like that. That that with that radius. That little brass edger is pretty easy to edge with. We're getting this thing all magged out. Well, I think we're going to mag this thing twice. Just because of the type of day it is, you know, we wanted to we wanted to mag it out and get it smooth. And then we wanted to let it dry up just a little bit more and mag it out again. That way when we pulled the broom over it, the broom looked really nice and tight on it. We didn't want to broom it too wet. All right, so here I am, I'm magging it out for the second time. This was probably a half an hour after we magged it the first time. I sent the guys off, they went to another job, so. That's why you see me there by myself. I could just reach out far enough to get the middle of that. So I didn't have to get on it at all. We don't steel trial any type of broom finish slab here in Maine. Um, it's just when, when you steel trial a slab that has air entrainment in it, you risk sealing the surface off and trapping either moisture or air in the slab. And that ends up leading to maybe a blister or some delamination down the road. We want to keep that surface open as much as we can. So that's why we only mag the surface when we do broom finishes. But you can mag it twice if you have to. It comes out still really, really nice. Nice broom, two foot broom, just to give that some texture. I didn't have a bucket of water with me right there to wash that broom, so I'm just flicking off some of that cement paste so it doesn't build up too much on the, the bristles of the broom. So remember to stay till the end so you can see how this hot tub fits on this thing. Yeah, we got it almost all broomed now. Once I finish brooming it, I'm going to put that final edge on it. And then it's just a matter of letting it dry for another 30 or 40 minutes before I can start stripping the forms. This is part two, like I said earlier, of a two-part series on how to form, pour, and finish a hot tub slab. If you haven't watched part one yet, where we do all the forming, go check that out at the end of the video. Yeah, I'm just doing some final touch-ups. Again, the only part that's going to show when we're done, after they set the hot tub on, is about two inches around the edges of this thing. 
but that doesn't mean I don't want it to look nice still. actually working today right down on the coast of Maine it's uh, we're right on the ocean uh, you can't see it but I'm probably a couple hundred feet from the ocean right there it these people have a real rocky coastline I'm gonna show you that at the end of the video too it's pretty cool but there's there's no beach here and they can't they have it they don't have a dock but the rock is really really cool they can fish right off the rocks. They can fish for striped bass, uh, mackerel. I think those are the two most popular fish to f catch right off the rocks. And I'm just touching up the edges with the edger. That's probably going to be all you're going to see when this thing's done. Alright, so I gave it about an hour after I got done brooming it and edging it. Now I'm taking the stakes out. I'm going to try to pull those forms off so I don't have to come back here tomorrow. Concrete's set up. It's plenty hard enough. And then we're giving it, we're about three days before they're going to put the hot tub on it. So they're going to the slab's going to have plenty of time to cure before they put the hot tub on it. That board I used for the circular pot, that's a PVC board. It's, we call it, it's called AZAC up here. We can get it at Home Depot. We can get it at Lowe's. They're expensive, but they last a long time. And they, you can really curve, curve them a lot without breaking them. I've had, you know, we use a lot of four inch ones. That's a one by eight. But I've had some four inch ones for, I don't know, three or four years that we just use over and over again. We do a lot of pool decks with those. Everybody wants curved pool decks up around here. So I'm having a little hard time getting that stake out. There was ledge under that. There's some crushed rock right under the slab. But there was only about three or four inches of crushed rock. The rest of it was right on the ledge. So they were, it was right on these big, huge rocks. Sometimes when you drive a pin in there, it gets wedged in between them. Once I get all these pins up, then I'm going to see if I can get that curved board off without leaving any marks or scrapes on the slab. It's going to want to kind of just pop off there. We always screw our forms together too, as you can see. We just, they're just, for us, it's easier to form stuff with screws and strip stuff too, rather than using a hammer and nails. That's an eight inch thick slab too. That's about the standard for hot tubs up here in this area. What do you guys pour for thicknesses for, for hot tubs anyway? Let me know down in the comments. 
How many of you guys strip your slabs the same day that you pour them to? We we normally do. If it's a garage or a house or anything, we we normally saw them and strip them all the same day. We don't usually leave the forms on and come back another day. The only time we might do that is if, if it's in the same town that we're from, but that's rare. All the slabs we do are usually either power trowel finished or they're broom finished so by the time they've, they've set up enough to get that type of finish on them especially a power trowel finish there we go right there so there's the finished product you can see how it fits on there. Everything fit really good. And that's that's what we like to see. The owners were really happy with that. Hey guys, this is where I'm working today. It's it's right off the coast. Uh, it's down here in Georgetown, Maine. Um, there's not really any sandy beaches here, but a lot of rock, a lot of ledge. It's beautiful here. See, it's low tide right now. Let's see if I can get down here a little further. All that rock. It's pretty cool. See the lobster, lobster pots out there. There's no place to put a boat though. No place to really put a dock. We're working down in the ocean today.